Hi everyone, today we will find out if the choke filtering of, in the power supply is it any better than resistor filtering and uh, you have seen probably hopefully <laughs> maybe not uh, circuit design uh, schematics and, uh, and then you have seen that some tube amplifiers use uh, resistors to filter your uh, power and possibly after that they also add some uh, transistors to help with the smoothing and others they use chokes inside instead of the resistors but uh, often in many cases if it's a push-pull amplifiers they just put in a single capacitor and leave the voltage the the rail the b plus voltage uh, very choppy and that's when you hear the amps humming and uh, it's not because that's how the tube design works it's how cutting the cost works uh, because if you only have a single capacitor filter for your power supply then that leaves too much residual hum and even though in the push-pull design uh, it's uh, quite uh, immune to the harm from the power supply but uh, it's not totally immune so if you have uh, several volts maybe like 5-10 volts of harm in your uh, B plus you will still have several millivolts thousand times lower in voltage a million times lower in power but it's still audible with more sensitive speakers yeah. actually with more sensitive speakers it can be extremely annoying and with low efficiency speakers low sensitivity speakers it uh, it is there if you listen for it but maybe from the listening position it's it's not bothersome however uh, it even if it's not bothering you that hum it still conceals quite a bit in the micro detail so what i am doing for all my uh, push-pull amplifier rebuilds is that i'm changing that single capacitor supply which used to be in the ampex uh, 65 uh, 16 amp as well and I change it uh, if I just want to do a quick job and, and keep it cheap uh, and have no space inside the chassis then add an RC Pi filter which is a resistor and a capacitor and that's how I did when I uh, rebuilt this amp because I just wanted a quick and cheap job just to hear what the amplifier is capable of is it uh, is it, I would say, uh, worthy to uh, do more upgrades on it? Does it have potential? Because if it doesn't have much potential, then I, uh, I won't bother doing much things with it. And I will just focus my attention on the Heathkit W6 rebuild and, and put more money into that. Because when you look at them, look at that. The Heath transformers are just super massive they are enormous like several times the size of the Ampex's uh, transformers so but as, as things worked out the Ampex amp is just amazing amazingly good sounding I would not have expected to, it to sound so good even though I uh, actually should have expected it because it has somewhat of a legendary status all the Ampex amplifiers are regarded as uh, extremely good sounding. However, there's word on the internet uh, only about the big Ampex amps, the big brothers of this. So those units that were in the large theater rooms, those are the ones that have a huge uh, follower basis. I would not say huge, but maybe there's a couple dozen people who know about them who, who maybe have one and uh, and and this one it they used to be their monitor amplifier so so this was the amp uh, that the uh, movie companies 
uh, that Universal Studios and others they used to mix and master the soundtracks for their movies. So while they are lower in power output than the Big Brothers, but they also have a more refined sound because you don't have to amplify the signal uh, to a higher degree um, so anyway uh, after rebuilding these amps i have posted a couple of videos on it how it sounds and more recently i have those videos and measuring the tube temperatures and what effect these uh, cooling fins have by the way they have tremendous effect check out those videos However, I haven't told any of you yet what was the change of installing a choke uh, for the uh, filtering and, uh, and in addition uh, I also changed the filament supply so that I added an extra filament transformer to heat the uh, power section phase splitter and input tube. And uh, before I tell you <laughs> what was the result, I want to add that if you do some modifications like that at home, then go step by step. So step one, uh, add the uh, extra filament transformer and then listen for the sound so that you can learn what is the effect of a single change. I have done that modification on several amps before, so uh, I, I was not really uh, keen on just doing an extra step in modification so that I put in the transformer, then uh, I put it in the system, listen to it, and then I take it out again, do more modifications. Uh, no, I just wanted to have everything done at the same time, but I have the experience basis to draw on when you do these things yourself, I, I really recommend to always do a single change at a time. So even though you are anxious to hear the end result, but wait, just hold on because you will learn so much more. If you do five, six changes at the same time, you will have no idea what change was responsible for the differences you are hearing. Because maybe there's a change that actually made the sound worse but but like taking a step down and then four steps up the net result is still better however if you do each change at one point at one time and you listen for it and if it's not a positive change then undo it then your end result will be much better compared to just doing a bunch of random things together at the same time so uh, before my experience always was that when you add an extra filament transformer or if you have uh, several tubes but maybe you are running already them from an extra from a filament separate filament transformer but you are adding a separate transformer for the input and the phase splitter section and and uh, keeping the filaments fed separately that already has the same effect, which is the sound will be uh, more uh, comfortable. I would say uh, a layer of nervousness and agitation will go away from the sound. So if, if you have like all the heaters tied together or, or the heaters, which is another word of saying filament, is coming from the main power transformer because there is a lot of extra signals uh, going on, a lot of extra magnetic changes going on from the high voltage uh, winding and the winding for the uh, rectifier that introduce a lot of noise and, and uh, capacitive and static coupling uh, and uh, that will be translated in the sound as nervousness. And yes, uh, if you have uh, excellent quality power transformer, which has uh, extra shielding in it, maybe Faraday cage or whatnot, yes, that will uh, improve, much improve the situation. But even in that case, if you have such high quality transformer and such high quality extra filament transformer, it will be still superior than just using a single uh, piece of iron. And now I want to take this as an opportunity 
to to tell everyone that if you cannot afford a single piece of very high quality power transformer with man, uh, with the internal shielding and so on a copper screen then your next step to do to get similar sound is to have a separate power transformer and separate filament transformer and that will take you almost to the same level where a nice uh, that but very expensive unit would have taken you so coming back to how it sounds now this is turning out to be a teaser so actually it sounded way better than i expected the change was way bigger so i expected a more relaxed sound and a faster uh, sound so because when you add a choke into the power supply instead of a resistor uh, then you add um, extra voltage storage capability to your power supply and when your choke is uh, has a lower DCR than the resistor you are replacing you are also speeding up your supply so it means that with the extra voltage added you have a bigger uh, headroom for uh, for base you have a bigger headroom for dynamics and with the lower DCR of the supply you will have much faster transients so faster transients, a bigger headroom and uh, and because of the filament transformer uh, a, a more relaxed, more natural presentation and yes, uh, this is what I got from the amplifier but to a much larger degree than what I have expected and I also have to add that I did a third modification as well and that third modification was to change the capacitance distribution in the power supply instead of uh, 40 microfarad at the first filter and 100 microfarad at the second filter I added these two together to have 140 microfarad for the second filter and I added an extra 20 microfarad as the first filter capacitor so if you think about that the total capacitance has barely increased so it changed from 140 to 160 microfarads so the change on paper right you would think it should be negligible but no it's a much bigger change because by dropping the first capacitance you make the power transformers job much easier because uh, it, it rings much lower because it can draw uh, voltage and current across a larger part of the cycle that feeds the rectifier tube however we have uh, lower filtering so we'll have uh, twice as big hum compared to having 40 microfarads there and I'm compensating for that bigger hum with a bigger second uh, capacitor so increasing it from 100 to 140 microfarads it's not enough to compensate for the hum so it, so this uh, configuration hums more than the original did but the choke change from the resistor change improves the hum situation as well so i end up with about the same hum level as i had in the before the modification so how do i know this partly from experience and partly from using a, a software called duncan amps power supply designer it's a psud it's a free software you can download it and it's absolutely wonderful and i would say mandatory to use it and and it gives uh, very accurate simulations it, i i love it it is is fantastic and then it's 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 absolutely awesome that it's freely available so what that did to my uh, power supply is that i should have the same hum level as i had before however in the sound i hear that there's a great change in uh, in the low level area 
so everything seems to be much uh, quieter and calmer than before and and it's not because hum has disappeared because the hum level haven't changed anything and uh, and even before the change when i listen for the driver for a 60 hertz hum or 120 i can put my eardrum at the at the cone like touching the cone and i cannot hear anything you can tell that the amp is on so even before the change the hum level was so low with these 102 or 103 db efficient speakers so how can it be that the low level detail increased so much and it it feels so much quieter than before and um, i do not have an exact explanation for that and it's just uh, it's because um, because of the uh, choke filtering uh, there is um, a much higher transient speed available so you are getting all the lowest details in uh, at a much higher speed and uh, and that uh, and when you have extra speed uh, capability that has the effect that you are getting more uh, resolution so ev every sound is, is is becoming much easier to perceive it's kind of like uh, removing a veil from someone's voice or or someone like talking in a room next to you it's it's kind of hard to hear but when that person is next to you it's so much easier to understand the words and 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 even hear the minute details uh, so so that's what has been happening and it's just shocking how much more lower details are now available and uh, and indeed the dynamics and the speed at uh, at higher uh, the dynamic range levels has increased tremendously as well which is just absolutely starting because uh, it has been absolutely top-notch world-class even before this modification and uh, and it's just startling to see that it has jumped up to the next level and um, and there was one failing that uh, this amplifier had compared to my single-ended uh, uh, amplifier is that at the low level details were not as good not nearly as good as there so that's why when i'm paying them i've been missing my single-ended amp uh, tremendously because it did not have those uh, low level details so i i tended to play it uh, uh, much louder than the single-ended amp and uh now after the change i have all of those uh, low level details uh, plus some unexpected changes which were a much much improved mid-range so now this push pull amp sounds like a single ended amp <laughs> yes so so eventually if you have your power supply uh, responsive enough then even your push-pull can have such wonderful mid-range as a single-ended amplifier has. So now this amp is unifying the best of the sonic properties of both worlds, the, the mid-range and the uh, natural imaging of a, of a single-ended amp, plus the dynamic capability and the uh, unlimited volume capability of the push-pull amplifiers uh, so thank you for tuning on this video log is getting too long so logging out thank you please like and subscribe bye bye